Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. Final exercise, all right? We are in exercise number three, simulate product purchases. And so as the, the introductory paragraph explains, a product is simply a feature that can be paid for and unlocked independent of whether the app itself is in trial mode or full version. It's just another way to monetize your app. The canonical example is that of a game where you can unlock levels or sell in-game vanity items or things of that nature. Uh, in this exercise, we're going to enable in-app purchases by allowing customers to unlock all the Italian recipes. So they'll see a little bit of the Italian recipe, but in order to get the directions, they're gonna to have to purchase all Italian recipes for an additional 99 cents. And the key to getting this work at a high level is that we're gonna need a new data source class that manages the information about our product. So we're gonna create a product license data source. And so it will be very similar to the, uh, the app license data source that we created a couple lessons ago. Uh, it'll determine whether or not this particular user has licensed the Italian recipe. So it's gonna communicate with, eventually, the Windows Store API. For now, it'll be using the current app simulator. Uh, and the process will be very similar to what we've created again before with the purchasing process when the user clicks the purchase button on any italian recipe it'll kick off that purchase process we're going to be listening for any changes to licensing in our product license data source because it too will impl implement the i notify changed event and all the plumbing that goes into that to make it work our ui will be listening to changes for the properties that'll be updated by our product license data source, whether or not to display the button again, or because we haven't purchased it yet, or display the directions because we have now purchased it. Okay, so let's go ahead and work our way through this. First of all, we're gonna need to add this new product license data source. So I'm gonna just go to our data model and right click and select add a new class. And we'll call this class, whoops, product license data source.cs. Great. Go ahead and click A to select it all. And then what we're going to do is replace its contents with the contents we have here on our clipboard. And so just take a quick peruse around. There's our notify, I notify property changed. It's going to say, I changed. Update me on your UI if you're if you're looking at me, if you're binding to me, okay? And so notice here that it does have this property group title that'll come into play. And here we're checking if the group title is Italian, then we want to check the licensing information from the current app simulator. Uh, if it's not Italian, then we're gonna go ahead and submit license equals true. If the license information is active, then we're gonna uh, return true, but if it's not, then we're going to need to um, begin to listen for the license changed event, waiting for the user to click the button and to purchase. If that never happens, they never see the Italian recipes. If it does, then this on license changed event will get fired at some point because it'll return information from, it'll be listening for changes from the Windows Store API, uh, at which point this method gets fired, which updates the properties, is licensed, and is trial. And any of our user interface controls listening for that will make an update uh, to their UI as a result of it, okay? So much of this is true. We have public properties for is licensed and is trial and for the format of price, just like we had in our app license data source. So that's, that's familiar ground, familiar territory. Now we want to go to the item detail page because this is where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. This is where it actually all gets implemented, whether they see the directions for the Italian recipes or whether they see a purchase button. So what we want to do is, just like we did previously, we're going to uh, add this product license data source reference and the Boolean visibility converter inside of our page.resources. So once we have references to those, we can use them declaratively. So we're looking for the item detail page .xaml, and we're looking for our 
page.resources section. We'll just paste those guys in there. Again, it doesn't see this. Let's build so that we can build our product license data source. And now it should recognize it, and it does. Great. Next up, we're going to want to replace the text block elements for binding uh, that bind to the directions and replace each of the text blocks with the following statements. All right, so why do you suppose there be two? Well, there will be one for each of the two. Flip views inside of our app. All right, so here's our first text block that we're going to replace. And I'll scroll down. Here's our second flip view. And here's where we're binding to directions. And we're going to replace that. And let's take a look at what we see instead. We still see the text block that binds to directions, but this time the visibility is controlled by this is licensed uh, property that comes from our product license data source. Again, it's now going to be listening for changes to this property. And if the changes is from is license equal false to is license equals true, then it will uh, set the visibility equal to true here, okay? And the reverse is true with the is trial for this particular recipe. Um, if it's trial, then we'll set the visibility uh, equal to true, and then once they purchase visibility, uh, the, the is trial will be false, and so the visibility will be false. Notice that the source for each of these is the license, and the license is defined way back up here in our... Um, Uh, in our page.resources as a product license data source. And let's see, what else can we say about it? Of course, it also uses that Boolean divisibility converter because we don't need true or false here. What we really need is going to be collapsed, visibility.collapsed or visibility.visible. All right. All that should make sense to you at this point. Okay. So now. What we want to do is implement the code behind. So we're going to open up item detail page.xaml.cs. We're going to add the using statement. And uh, then we're going to add this to the load state. So here we are populating the licenses group title and that will dictate whether it's Italian in which case we now need to look and see whether they're licensed to use Italian recipes and if it's not then it it really just pops out and say yeah it's true you can show you can show the directions alright so here let's copy this and now we want this at the end of the load state method And then finally, we want to allow the user to click on the button and to be able to purchase. And we didn't really point out that there was a, uh, a purchase product event handler defined, but it is in there. Let me just go ahead and point that out to you here. When we copy this code, look at the button, it has a click on purchase product, so we're just implementing that right now. Let's pop that here at the very bottom. All right, and let's see what else we need to do. That should be just about it. So we've seen code similar to this before. When they want to purchase the product, we're going to, first of all, make sure that the app is not a trial app. If it is a trial app, then we need to go and license the app as a whole first. And then if it is, uh, if is trial equals false, it's a full version, then we can allow them to purchase the Italian recipe. So we call that request product purchase async. All right, so we're going to need a couple of steps here. 
And so let's go ahead and run the app. And the first order of business is to make sure that we purchase the entire app. And let's make sure it's been purchased here before we move on. Looks like that part still works. Now let's scroll over to Italian recipes and we see directions have been replaced with this button. We can purchase Italian recipes for 99 cents. Let's go ahead and purchase. We'll go ahead and click OK. And now we can see the directions. Outstanding. And very little C sharp code invo involved, a lot of declarative code uh, because of the binding for the button to purchase and the directions. Okay, and so as the summary does point out here in the end, after we've gotten our app to work, we'll want to replace calls to current app simulator with current app. We've already talked about that in the last lesson. And that's it. We're all done here. <laughs> well, I do have a few closing remarks to make uh, as we wrap up the series, like where to go from here. So we'll talk about that in the next lesson. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.